So did you push record as well, Terry? Yeah, I'm recording now. Okay, great. All right. So hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Shelia Stevens, and welcome to this live podcast recording. And it's good to see some familiar faces here tonight that we are used to seeing um, every first Thursday of the month from our transformative coaching clinic, like Anthony and Cora and Petra and the many others. We're so glad to have you here tonight today. Um, I'm also joined by Sandra Heim and Sylvia Kittil. And hello, hello. Yeah, say hello, guys, and wave hello. to everyone who, in case they don't know you. <laughs> Sylvia, do you want to say hi as well? Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Mm. And we are all thrilled to have our three principals, colleagues, and friends in Africa. And they've come to share their invaluable wisdom with us. And I guarantee you there's so much that we can learn from their experiences and their insights. And they're going to be speaking all about that with us later on. Um, our esteemed guest, who you can see already on the screen today, are from the Naki Valley Refugee Settlement in southwestern Uganda. And we're going to be discussing, or they're going to be talking about, the transformative power of the three principles and their crucial role as 3P alcohol counselors in their work. They're going to be sharing how their work helps people in their community to overcome addiction and heal from alcoholism. Now you might be thinking to yourself um, that maybe alcohol doesn't play a role in your life right now, or you don't know anybody who's dealing with this issue. And we wanna encourage you to listen anyway, very closely to these stories because they contain valuable insights that could positively impact your life in unexpected ways. Um, as the three principles always do, regardless of the, the topic through which they come and are presented. I want to make some notes um, in advance about the language and how we'll be connecting with each other this evening, because we have many people here from Germany and Austria and Switzerland tonight on this live podcast episode. We will be speaking in English, um, and the team from the Naki Valley Department, Alcohol Department, are actually going to be speaking with us even in Swahili, and Phillips will be translating to English. We don't want you to worry if you can't understand everything all the time or right away. Um, it's not so much about the words anyway in this understanding, as you already know, but it's very much about the deeper feeling. And that's what we would love for you to listen to today. Um, it's our goal to some point in the future, um, have this translated to German so that you will have those um, closed captions as well. And we wanted to make you aware of uh, functionality in Zoom. Maybe you don't know about it, but if you take your mouse and you go down to the bottom of your screen, you should see an option to turn on the closed captioning. Um, I'm going to say this in German for the people who are speaking German. Also, schau unten auf den Bildschirm. Da seht ihr ein Symbol, das steht CC, und dort könntet ihr Untertiteln ein- und ausblenden. That's very helpful if you want to have an additional support in understanding the English tonight. We also wanted to let you know that we're sort of in a way in Africa today <laughs> together with the team, which means sometimes the audio and the video and the internet connection aren't always as predictable as we're used to maybe here in Europe. And we'd like to ask you to have some patience today if things get a little bit um, yeah, off balance, maybe they have to turn their, their video picture off just so we can hear the audio. Um, just stick with us in the most present way that you can. And here come a few words about Na Naki Valley. Um, you're gonna see or hear also this wonderful gentleman, Harry Derbitsky. He's coming um, from a totally other place. Harry, where where are you right now sitting? I live I live in a little town just outside of Vancouver, Canada, which is on the west coast of, of Canada. Yeah. And Harry came to us to tell us about 3PN Africa a couple of months ago. We got an email from him 
Um, and when he first started to show up on our emails, we were we didn't know who Harry was. We didn't know what the Naki Valley Refugee Settlement is, but he let us know. And he's leading this initiative, and he's going to be introducing the 3PN Africa program when I'm done speaking. And I wanted to say a few words about Naki Valley, Naki Valley before that. Naki Valley is one of Africa's oldest and largest refugee camps and home to over 130,000 people from countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Somalia, and South Sudan. While it offers refuge, the camp's residents face significant challenges, including alcoholism, often linked to past trauma, and stresses of displacement. And so today we're honored to host four exceptional, and Carrie says, the best counselors in the 3P world, um, namely the 3P Naki Valley Alcohol Department. These gentlemen here that you see before us and these beautiful white shirts and their green collars. Maybe you guys want to give everyone just like a wave <laughs> and say hi. These individuals has not only overcome the struggles with alcoholism themselves, but are dedicated to helping other people in the camp. They work joyfully and tirelessly, applying the three principles to create profound changes in the lives of those battling addiction in their community. Today, they will share their personal stories, the challenges they faced, and the incredible transformations they've witnessed. As you listen, you'll see how the members of the 3 P Naki Valley Alcohol Department have grown from refugees to professional alcohol counselors, achieving numerous successes along the way. This exemplifies one of the powers of the three principles, namely releasing unlimited human potential. And I'm sure you're going to feel that today. While Harry Derbisky leads the 3 PN Africa team, Phillips, who you see in the front in the group, serves as the manager of this department, playing a pivotal role in the growing success. Their efforts extend beyond battling alcoholism, and they demonstrate that happiness is free, regardless of external circumstances. So guys, let's warmly welcome Harry Derbitsky and the 3P Naki Valley Alcohol Department members. We are very eager to hear and learn from you today and your incredible work, and thank you all for joining us. Let's get started, guys, and I'm gonna hand over to Harry. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, if you have questions, certainly ask them. And uh, the more relaxed we are, the better it's going to be. Uh, when I started writing my latest book, I've written six of them, uh, two on addiction. But uh, the latest book was called My Statement on Life. I wanted to express it from what I had seen as an original student of Sydney Banks. And uh, but what happened was Africa took off and the sharing took off and it all came without any marketing. Nothing was, I have never approached anyone and we're doing maybe 20, 25 projects now in Africa, in Uganda, in Kenya. Today, for the first time, we're in the Congo and, and this is all just happening organically. And so I had to add in the book, my statement on life and dreams. This is my dream. I had a dream to share what Sid experienced. And I, I saw that it was the answer to alleviate all human suffering. And I wanted to be part of that dream. And it came very, very late in my life at 69. So at 27, I had this incredible spiritual experience of oneness and I, and I had to go through life. And as you know, life can be challenging, can be interesting. But at 69, I was taken into the world of addiction. So before that, I've never been addicted. I've uh, never took a psychology course. But the understanding all of a sudden resonated in me. And I went from working with the Native American Indians, to working in addiction, working in mental health, being the training director of Back to the Fitra Mentoring Academy, which is the largest Muslim 3P movement 
in, in the world, in about 40 countries. And then out of the middle of the blue, Africa came. And it just took off. You see, they were ready. Western world, not so much. They were ready to understand the spiritual nature of the principles, not just the psychological aspects and how it applies to God. They already knew about that part of it. And so when I started to share often, it would just be 15, 20 minutes, and they got it just like that. I went, oh, this is a very receptive crowd. And it just started to take off. But not every, every they heard at different levels. And Phillips and his group, Phillips was among the first of the students. And he stayed true to the purity of the principles. He stayed true to knowing that it would help people. And we've grown together. And growing together means we learn from each other together. It is true that I am the head of the 3P in Africa movement with my team. But the first year, I there was teachers. The second year, the students became teachers. You see how it works? That's what you are going through. You're going through levels of understanding until you can teach. And as you can imagine in Naka Valley, they have had to do it all with voluntary, no money. We have proven something that is not talked about in 3P. 3P is more powerful than money. We have had to let the power of 3P change them, not Harry, them. And they took it out and found it and took it out to the people. Now, the three, the three gentlemen beside Phillips, they have 24 kids along with three wives. And so they had to teach under the most adverse conditions. And then lately, we've been able to have a little bit of money through the GoFundMe account and stuff where they've been able to, for, one, for the first time in 10 years, eat normal and to pay for their transportation and to have shirts and have, get this, business cards. They wanted business cards and, and all of, but the power is that we are creating a momentum, an energy that is growing together. Obviously I'm in Canada. I've never been in Africa, but it's my nature. I like to, I like challenges. I like to go where no one else goes. I don't follow anybody in 3P. I had the best teacher, Sidney Banks. I didn't need anybody else except his teaching. But it took me a long time to, to experience it where I really understood what I had heard. And I was frustrating for Sid because I was a tough student. But I never forgot. I never lost that thought that I wanted to help people, the world. The caring carried me through the tough times. I promise you, if you care about other people, you will make it. If you care only about your world, you will get that at a certain level. But it requires a sharing. If you can't share, you can't grow. It's the law. The world is lost because everybody's concerned with themselves. Africa, because they don't have, they have to share. And Phillips and, and the department are really a treat to be in. We meet, we talk about 3P questions, and we have evolved. And the involvement is very important to see. They're refugees, losers, the worst of the world. And then I screamed at them, no, you aren't refugees. You're professional alcohol counselors. And that's who they became. I didn't do it. 
they became it. And guess what? They like it. They like being successful. So with that in mind, we'll pass it on to Phillips. And I want you to listen to, to their wisdom. I want you to ask them questions. I want you to learn not only from them, but you have to realize you are giving them a great honor. They are thrilled to be here. This is their first time they have presented. I have done many webinars and so on with others. This is their presentation. And this department has the potential to change Africa, just like 3P in Africa has the potential because they have a huge alcohol problem, not small, everywhere in Africa, a huge. And if there's one area that the world is full of, Yajinga. See, I know three words in Swahili, Shayla. Habari, hello. Asante Sana, thank you very much. And Yajinga, bullshit. And there's a lot of bullshit. A lot of Yajinga in the, in, in the, to be honest, they're all lost. And we've been lucky. We don't have to mix what the world is doing with 3P. We just have 3P. See the innocence about an innocent mind that doesn't have all the contamination of the nonsense that the world is saying is an easier mind to teach because they, if they grasp the positive feelings and the learning, and what do I teach? We know the three principles, mind, thought, and consciousness. I don't teach that. I, I teach that, but I teach it through the love of God and understanding the role of thought. They know the love of God beyond what the Western world does. Not everyone, it's a generalization. But they didn't understand the role of thought. And when they brought, started to understand the role of thought, they understood the love of God more. Because you always bring it back to the spiritual. And that's what Sidney Banks did. Sidney Banks was a spiritual teacher. And what he taught was a spiritual psychology. So with that in mind, Phillips, before I start to talk too much more, uh, <laughs> go ahead. And, and Phillips is going to uh, take off the video because the sound is better for, for, for that. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Harry. And uh, first of all, I welcome everyone uh, this online event, and uh, we are very much excited and happy to be here, and happy that we have seen you come to join us today, listen our sharing. Uh, so I'm Taiwa Phillips. Uh, I'm manager in Akivare uh, CPR code department, as it was earlier mentioned. I'm also a founder and CEO, CEO, Healing Health, Healing Hearts, also based here in Akibare. So with me here, uh, I have uh, a team of uh, three more counselors that are with me here. And uh, we are very happy to be sharing with you our <coughs> experience on how three principles have helped us in seeing uh, our own duty in life as we were before. So I'm uh, super excited to welcome everyone. And uh, I'm really happy that we have come to understand that happiness, love, forgiveness, contentment, all is coming from understanding these principles. It's also my great pleasure that 
we found Harry because uh, before uh, before we we met Harry, we didn't know how life was. We were living a misery life in Akiba, but after we had met Harry, he had trained us about the principles, and uh, we had to understand how life can change. Not changing by maybe force, forcefully, but willing, willingness to change. Because this has happened as uh, oh, we started uh, sharing uh, in two healing circles where we would meet uh, a group of uh, uh, 10 coming into the group and uh, we share we share the, like their traumatic feelings, they share their stories, but still it was not enough because people had limited understanding. Even myself as a leader who are leading that healing circle, I didn't have enough experience to make me uh, like help people, help refugee community understand that happiness is something free. But after meeting Harry, it was, it came, it came true. It came true and uh, we had to get trained then from on how we get we got trained, we had to pick one member from Healing Circle that I, I was leading, uh, who was heavily addicted, and uh, that was uh, Murin Dangabo, who is here with me. But in that, he was heavily addicted because of uh, traumatic feelings he had, thinking more about the past past experience he had, and uh, causing his. Uh, consciousness level being down and every time going into alcohol. So after that, we started sharing um, every, every Fridays with Harry and that uncovered the wisdom of not only Murindangabo, but even myself. Because you should think of, think of the past experience of the life uh, he had uh, he had encountered in the country uh, from the other sea Congo, even the life he has uh, seen, bad life here in Uganda, in Akiva, even as a refugee. But he did not, he didn't know that living um, in Akiva, embracing happiness is something free. So we came to that and we saw the power of changing thought it was overthinking, you know that uh, thought is something that is there. If you decide to think positive, then you will live. But if you decide to think negative, then you will also be negative. And, uh, oh, the, the sound is not too good, Phillips. How is it there? That's a little better, yeah. So we, we had to understand about love and uh, sharing about love. Now, Murinda had to introduce a friend who is also uh, Nehemia Bijeromami about sharing love. So <clears throat> because of love, they had to come together and do the training sessions. And they had also to understand that loving God is also vital. And they had to understand that we have free will to think whatever we want. Because if we think negative, then we shall feel negative. And they had to understand that living in life, we, are, we have like a, uh, this what we call a paint brush. What we paint is what we see. If we decide that we are going to paint a black in, in our life, then we cannot expect to see light. Because if we decide to, to see light and we paint white color, then uh, it will be the white color that is going to come out. So just, just ask Phillips, I'm going to explain that to them. So what, what Phillips is talking about is what the way Sid described thought. Sid described thought as a paintbrush. And in the paintbrush, if you dip the paintbrush in the color black, that is the feeling that you're going to create. It, so uh, the thought creates the feeling. 
So when you, and if you take the paintbrush out of the color block and put it in another color, that is the color you're going to create. So that is a, a, a metaphor that Sidney Banks uh, introduced in a lot of his teachings. And, and that was a very effective metaphor for Africa. To, to, to explain it in a, in a simple thing, they like visual, they like simple. I would say the German are a little more, uh, well, I, I won't get into that, but, but uh, the, the simplicity of that metaphor uh, often uh, hit home for them. Go ahead, Phillips. So now, um, after that gradual process, from uh, Monindangavo uh, up to Andrew, after learning how to share up, now they understand that sharing, you share love and you receive love. They came to love each other, inviting them to the department. Now they have now gone outside, loving their families, loving their neighbors, and even sharing love with the community. So that everyone can feel free, can understand that wisdom lies within and love is the answer. Also, they have come to understand that forgiveness, forgiveness is so vital in life because they didn't know that forgiveness starts with their own selves, with our own lives. Now we have learned about forgiveness and we are still moving into the community, sharing about forgiveness, sharing about love, sharing about feelings, that if you have a negative feeling, then automatically it will, you cannot have a negative feeling, then you think positive. So people in Nativare being um, war, war victims, they needed silly, silly principles, and we are sharing silly principles um, all over Nativare. So we have been able to set more other separate department uh, from, from Nakivare Silver Code Department, now we are setting more departments in different villages so that we can be reaching out to many people in the settlement to make sure people come to understand about how city principles work, how love is so, is so much important in our lives, understanding that love of God is so vital. Because sometimes here in Africa, or even Nakivare, you find someone has gone to church. But then after coming in tomorrow, he has not, he's just gone, he has gone in the church, but after leaving the church, he has not even got the meaning of what was in the church, what was just preached in the church, just going to the church. So it is now becoming a practice to understand that love starts with, the, with our own feelings and sharing love. We have to receive love. So it is being now practice into Nakivare and people are appreciating it. And uh, we are very happy that over, over 200 people are now understanding city principles and they have been helped because there is a major challenge here in the camp of uh, trauma. People, because they have lost a lot of their property, because they have lost everything from their countries, because they are living without houses, because they don't have water, because they don't, they don't have clothes. They have been having this sort of overthinking over their head, but they have come to understand that it's the free will to think whatever we want in life. If we decide to think negative, then the negativity must arise. But if we decide to think positive, then the positivity must also arise. So I'm very happy to share with you. And uh, of course, I just uh, want to explain, Philip, just a second. Just for the audience, Naka Valley is, is is not one settlement. It's seventy eight villages. So so the so now they they with the donations they've been able to take a motorcycle. They have to rent it, and then they get to go to all the other villages out around. They, not all of them, but they're spreading out more and more. And what and what he's and what Phillips is talking about love is the way Sid defined love. Again, lack of negative thinking. 
as soon as you do, as soon as the, the lack of negative thinking automatically creates a loving space. So um, go ahead, Phillips. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, no problem. So we have been um, already we are successful because uh, we have seen uh, changing the lives of the people through sharing. Because when we are sharing, we are growing. But still, we, we face different challenges, as uh, we earlier mentioned, and uh, we still have uh, our GoFund fundraiser moving on, uh, that we have uh, almost uh, 11, 11 items that we are looking at. Like, uh, we don't have department office, so that when we have a, a department office, we'll find many people in Akiva can know that if I need, uh, let's say, addiction healing program, even if I, 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 they don't come to me because we may not be able to reach all of the villages, people will be accessing us at the office. Some are in the village are moving. So we don't have uh, a department office uh, in Akivare when we are like, even now when we are sharing, we use internet, we have printed internet, we don't have uh, a computer or printer and stationery because people in the Kivare, after they have some certain sports, we have materials to, to distribute to them so that when they read, even if someone is at his own home, you will come to read the recovery story of Murindangawo um, and the, the story itself will have to hear him. So we still need a printer and a computer to do that. We don't have chairs. Um, we don't have uh, transport like a motorcycle to make sure that it can help us to move from different villages, um, solar panels, facilitation for counselors, because people here, these counselors have been um, uh, sharing into the community, moving uh, uh, from Monday to Friday, visiting different villages, but still you find someone is not facilitated, he has not taken evil, even water, no transport, everything. So we are very happy, but as uh, GoFund uh, has started, has been raised, uh, we have been able to receive 598 uh, donations, and uh, we have been able to process business cards. Um, even this internet you are using goes through the donations. And many more people have, uh, the council has been, have been able to receive a very good food. So, we are very privileged to share with you, and uh, we look forward to continue the work. So I will uh, extend uh, the sharing to now my colleagues to share their stories. As we move on, there are three, then uh, we can continue. So we are going to start with uh, Murinda. Uh, Phillips, you're going to have to, yeah, it's good to show, but after that, you'll have to shut your audio, uh, your, yeah. just your audio only. Yeah. Okay. Mohindo is, is 67 years old, uh, uh, which, which is, by the way, 90% of the students that I have in in Africa are under 40. So it's, this, is, this is unusual. We have actually attracted as counselors elders. Okay. So, Mirinda is going to share, and uh, of course, you'll be sharing in Swahili, but I'll be doing translation to English. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm called Mbrinda Rugaraga. I'm I'm from Congo and I'm Mnyamrenge by tribe. I lived in Congo for some good time. From a long time. Then uh, war had to broke out in Congo. 
kuza and we had to run from Congo and become Jews. To Nakiva. Because they had taken everything. We lost uh, everything and even our houses were burnt. Killing people. I think when I was in Congo, I used to take a lot of alcohol. Because I had a lot. Even I could sell my cow and I could take alcohol. But when everything was taken, even the people were killed. Even they kidnapped my young brother. So I had to run to Nakiba. Now I'm living here in Uganda. Kufika hapa Uganda. So living here in Uganda, I had nothing. Even the clothes, no food. So we are seeing even life is becoming more harder. So I had, to, I was, I had to overthink. I had to ask my wife to Maybe we we'll go back in Congo. If we are to die, we die there. Because in Congo, still there are problems, but maybe we don't just go back. But for the good luck, God has done a great thing. I had to meet with Philips and he uh, had to share with me. And he uh, had to share with me about. Uh, uh, stopping drinking, uh, and I, I could not even understand because I didn't know what he was telling me about. Because I thought it is just a share. Because I was seeing everything. Everything is buying with money. Even taking alcohol. But through sharing, through sharing, I started now running. Now, what he was sharing to me, I started running myself. Even my wife had to see that I'm changing. It has started entering into my mind. Now, this uh, article department, this kind of area, it has helped me so much because I started loving myself. Because right now, my, my, my wisdom has been uncovered. Because even I was overthinking. But right now I'm living better. But all is coming from simplest potential. So I'm now, I, I, so I, I have now seen light. And uh, I'm very grateful for Harry because it was a surprise to me. Because uh, from, my, from Congo, I, it's my first time to see a white man even speaking with a white man. But it was, I, I became very happy. <laughs> and uh, what he was sharing to me, he was sharing true love. And I had to embrace it. And I had to see that God is very good. So I had to feel better. And I started thinking positive. And my wisdom has been pure. All the darkness that I have in my head disappeared. Everything was clear. I started now sleeping well. I started feeling happy. I started feeling love. I started forgiving myself. Even forgive, for, forgiving others. After feeling for forgiveness, 
I have to understand that it is a very strong medicine. Because it had to, to sweep away all my negative. So I had to feel positive. So it is good. I started sharing with others. I started moving around. And uh, it has been so good. Even sharing with my friend Nehemiah, this good teachings, because I had already tasted a very good food. I, I said I cannot just eat it alone. I encouraged my friends. Also joined me, and is still also feeling good. So, city principles has changed me, has changed my family and the community because it has just brought us from far. Because of the overthinking, we use it to think a lot, and it was not helpful. So I started sharing with others, teaching with others in the community. Because other people in the Kivari community have been facing this difficulty of alcohol. Even some that were from Congo or some from different countries. Those that have been here. I started now moving to them, sharing to them my experience. Every day I have to move and uh, I share my, my experience to them and they are changing. And they are appreciating the welcome. So I'm very happy. So we are sharing, but we still lack. We are still lack some transportation and some chairs, even internet use. Even the phones are moving as a cancer, but they don't even have a phone. So we still have some big chairs. We are very hopeful. The, so, the sound, Phillips, is 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 tough. Just just give it a break. I'm going to I'm going to uh, say a few words right now. Um, the, um, the Marinda was the first person to have to, to have the breakthrough. He set the example for the other two gentlemen. So he, the, all three of them were very heavy into alcohol, and. And Marinda had a very deep spiritual insight. He accessed his wisdom. And when he accessed his wisdom, he even said, I can't even stand the smell of alcohol. And he went and he became happy. The three went the three men that you're going to listen to, and I'm sorry for the for the poor quality sound, the three men, the their wives came to to me, we had a little ceremony and all three wives, and you know how, how hard it is sometimes for women to compliment their husbands type of thing. I don't, I'm, you know, they all came and said that the change in the gentlemen are amazing. Their lives have changed totally. Their whole existence is just changed from negative to positive. The beautiful feeling shared. And they were so respectful so appreciative of their husbands because they have changed and dropped the alcohol. So because Marinda had his breakthrough, he set the example. And Nehemiah said, gee, I'd like some of that. And he changed. And Nehemiah changed and Andrew changed. And and they all three are living examples of the power that alcohol is not a disease. They have left it totally behind and they've gone out into their community. And because they've continued to share it, they've grown and grown. And the department has grown and grown. Because you can see, I'm in Canada. 
I've never been to Africa. I can't teach the people in Aka Valley. I teach different people in Aka Valley, but but I can't. They're going out. They're making the change. And of course, you notice they're teaching in Swahili, which is the main language there. English, Swahili, and French. But Swahili is the is the is the main line. So they're they they've set something in motion. And as they've continued to grow, they've they've created their own momentum. They created a momentum where now they're going out trying to get people to go on shows. And they approached Jack Pransky and he came and talked to them about Modelo and, and shared. But he got touched. Dickin has come. Dickin, this is very important to understand about what we're doing. I did not ask Dickin for help. Dickin came to me and asked if he could be on the show because he felt the energy of, of, of what's happening there. You want to feel the energy. That's the way that's the way it was with Sid. If you felt the energy and were along with the story, you were growing. But if you didn't feel the energy, you got left behind. That's the way of 3P. It's energy. You either pick it up or you don't. Shayla picked it up. And she picked up. And because of it, she's enriched. And of course, the fact that she's enriched enriches us because she gives us this opportunity to share. So it's just a growing, impossible to see, except from the inside, reality. What 3P is about is not following the icons. That is not 3P. Sidney Banks's 3P is your connection to God. That's your, that's what you're looking for. What is your relationship to God? And what does it mean to be able to share with a world that doesn't want to hear? That's part of the journey. And so you can see why I'm so thrilled because people want to hear in Africa of all places. They want to hear. You know why? They're tired of being unhappy. In the Western world, they say, give me the money, I'll take the unhappiness. But they're they don't have the money. So they have, but they don't want to be unhappy anymore. And of course, what's amazing is we actually have the ultimate answer to alleviate all suffering. It's incredible. So Phillips, go ahead and it, Introduce the next guy. Where is Phillips? Oh, there you are. Sorry. <laughs> you bounced around in the pictures. I didn't spot you. Yeah. Oh, uh, and, so, and by the way, Mar Marinda, that was beautiful sharing. And some of it was hard to hear, I'll, I'll be honest, but be not because of what you said, but because of the so static, but very beautiful sharing. So, Let's move on to the next guy because time is moving on. Yeah, we are going to hear from uh, Nehemiah, who was our our second client to join, also a professional counselor, and now uh, hearing people around uh, sharing his uh, addiction experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mukanda. Greetings. Yeah, I'm very happy to meet all of you. And we're happy to meet you. When we were in Congo, we encountered a serious war. And we had to run from there. And we left there, but we left everything as had gone. Even people had lost lives. Because I had my relatives. Uh, he was shot uh, the leg. 
So I I was feeling a lot of fear. After feeling a lot, uh, having a lot of fear, I just spent three days in the bush. Because I was having, uh, I was fearing that even myself, they, they may kill me. So I had to run to Uganda. I came to Uganda. Reaching here, I did, me, I, didn't, I, I didn't know how to drink alcohol, I was not taking alcohol. Even in Congo, I was not taking alcohol. But reaching here in Akivari, I carried my, my past challenges, now I found some other challenges in Akivari, so I started taking alcohol. I started taking. I had to drink. I could drink, uh, even uh, stay, even I could not even uh, sleep. I would drink a lot. And now I used to drink. Even my wife had already felt bad with me. Because even if I could get um, small shings, I could run into alcohol. If I get something at home, I just uh, go sell it, I go to alcohol. Even I, I get my own clothes I, I use to wear, I sell it, I go to, to take alcohol. But after one day, I had to see uh, my friend Melinda coming to me. She came sharing good message to me. And he came telling me that we should go together and uh, we start learning, start training. But even me, I, I didn't I didn't give him my ears. But inside my my thinking, I started like feeling it. I had to come. So also I joined him. I had to meet Phillips. Also with Harry. And I started training. And in that training, I started now eliminating alcohol from my mind. Because in my mind, I had, I was just overthinking. So I started stopping gradually. Eventually, I stopped. And uh, I had to listen. And the, the way I listened, also I had to share with others. And how I, I shared to him, and also he had to, to, to understand about love. And we started learning together. And all of us started understanding. So the sound is no good. The sound is no good, Phillips. So uh, no, I can't hear. Say it again. Is it somehow clear there? You can hear. It, that, that that was clearer. Okay. After now uh, understanding, I started forgiving. Told myself I had to forgive myself, and I even forgive others. Even others. Now Others also started sharing love with others. Because they are in Akivari, there's a lot of people taking alcohol. 
but we have started now sharing to them. Because people are taking a lot of alcohol, thinking that it would be the solution. But they have now started listening. They have now started listening. And they have forgiven themselves. Even God is helping them. Because forgiveness is vital. Because they are now forgiving themselves. Because we have also shared our experience. But here in Akivari we have found a lot of challenges. Because of uh, limited, limited food. Because of limited crawlers. Even sharing uh, these principles to different villages, we lack transportation. We don't have even chairs. We don't have every, anything that he can help us to push us, share three principles to other villages. Even a phone, we are lacking. But we are lacking all those, but we are sharing love. But God is still helping us. But we are, we are still moving with our legs and we share love others. And moving like that, right now we have a beautiful feeling because we are helping each other. We are helping each other to understand the role of thought because we have forgiven ourselves. And those ones who are still over drinking, they have come to understand. So may God bless. That's the sharing from uh, Nehemiah. Okay, I got to say a few words now. Uh, you hear a lot about forgiveness. Uh, forgive, forgiveness, uh, as taught as we teach, is for, to forgive is to forget. If you're still thinking about it, you haven't forgiven. Now, when you come from a, a hellish background from the past, as an example, you have a family and you have 30 cows and you have a, a nice house, not nice house by German standards, but by African standards. And, and, and then another tribe comes and says, you have to leave and they burn the house down and they burn all the relatives house down and they kill the relatives and they cut the brother up into little pieces. And then you have to run away scared with nothing but the shirt on your back. And you have your 10 kids and you lose two of your kids on the way because of the uh, getting lost in the city and so on. And then you land in Naka Valley. You could imagine that there, there would be a, a little bit of hatred in there. And so they have had to learn the power of forgiveness. And, and as, as I see it, love and forgiveness are like brother and sister. If you can't forgive, you can't love. And so they have had to experience that from a wisdom perspective, from an inside perspective. And that, that, that has been a common theme of many of the top, of, with all, all the groups, the forgiveness is, is a requirement. We, of course, have to learn to, to forgive as well with all the horrors that the world is in right now type of thing. And so it, it, it's, it, it, it's just the, uh, the, the, the the power the power of 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 that and Nehemiah took took that and he then he understood about thought so he had to go through the forgiveness to go through and then he said oh it's thought and what of course when he saw that so the first Miranda saw wisdom accessing inner wisdom that was his insight. Miranda's insight was he understood about the role of thought. And then he, so that's what he shares with the people. It's always the purity of the principles was what you're sharing. You don't, the outside circumstances, 
Well, that's just the outside circumstances. We can we all can have a beef about life, but can we enjoy the moment free of the past memories? That is the real, really interesting question. Most of the world cannot. That's the reality that they live in. You're the lucky ones. You are the lucky ones. You have reached a point of letting those past memories go. And you've reached a point. Every time you let it go, you experience changed thought. The way Sid meant changed thought, not psychological. So, okay. Uh, next one, please. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> So we have uh, next is uh, Andrew, who was uh, who was the last one? The, 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 the sound is. Can you make the sound better? Am I somehow here? there? Uh, pretty good. Okay, go go ahead. Okay, so let's hear from uh, Andrew in Buguza was also our last client to join the department, also a professional counselor for now. Mm -hmm. Greetings, everyone. I'm Nico. I'm called Andrew Rumbuza. I'm also from Congo. I'm living here as a refugee. I'm just, I'm living here in Nakuka with a family of uh, nine members. The way I left Congo, I lost everything. And others were lost. So I had to run just to save my, the light. Reaching there in, in Uganda. Of course, we have experienced also new life of living as a refugee. We had uh, to lack food. We didn't have anything. So, because of all of this now, I had a lot of overthinking. Yeah. And my my wisdom now was covered. I was just living uh, in, in a covered way. So I used to just over move, move, but I didn't even know what I'm doing in life here in Nakivari. So I started now taking alcohol. Thinking that maybe when I take alcohol, it will be the solution. Because I had lost hope. And then after, I came to, to meet the, the department. And we came to meet with Phillips. And we started sharing. When I started now entering into the group, now my, like my wisdom that was covered, it became uncovered. So I started now feeling hopeful. So I started now loving myself. Because I had to, to guide my thinking. Even the, from there, I had to stop drinking. We had to continue sharing. And with Harry, he has done great work to see that we share in Swahili and he had to understand in two English. 
Yoni kafurahi ni kaona kweli kumbe hii maongezi iko ya mzuri na mpaka hivi inaendelewesha. So I've seen that three principles has been a gift to us in Nakivari. Because right now they have understood about love. Because before I was living like a chicken, but right, but right now I'm living I'm an ego. I'm now sharing my beautiful experience to other people. Because right now we are sharing uh, the experience that we have seen. And of course, we share this because it is connected with loving God. Because we have come to understand that if we were near God, then and we are very happy that we are sharing the true story and we are very happy that even the Rinakiva refugee community has welcomed our sharings because when we share to them, they are having what we share and we are also growing. And after understanding, and uh, we have come to understand that we are living with like two animals in us, uh, the black one and the white one. But if we decide now to feed the, the black one, then that is the negativity. But if we follow the white one and we feed it, then we see the duty in life. So we have come, I have come also to see that happiness is something free. And uh, of course, with applying happiness, we have, we, have for, we have forgotten the past and we are living in now. Because right now we are living happy and we, we have understood that we have free will to do what to think what we want and to do what we want. We have understood that if we are not we, are, we don't have love, then we are far from God. Now we are having neighbors, even the family members. Even living happy. And that is the beautiful feeling we are having. Though we are still living as uh, refugees, but we are so glad that we came to understand the three principles. And right now we are very happy because we are happy to share with you all visitors. Because seeing you here is also powerful. and uh, we are we are together and we shall keep sharing. And I'm saying love is power. And uh, together we do our best and God does the rest. Okay. Thank you. It's like so you you hear the word love, which it's just another key word. The reason we started to talk so much about love was that Muhindo, who comes from another village, said to me, "We we really believe in God, but we don't trust love." I said, that doesn't make sense to me. But because of all the horrible things they experienced, it, it got removed from with no hope, no love. And so they experienced that. Now, we have the four, this department, and they're going around. We also have a satellite office, a satellite village in a French Sudan village, uh, 
where we teach as well. I teach on every Wednesday or they teach. And uh, uh, and so there's a satellite office there. We have that and then we have the we have the department, the team going into all into expanding number of villages within it. And the, whether people stop drinking alcohol or not, I can promise you one thing. The spiritual growth is amazing. They are growing and growing and growing. People are getting happier by being exposed to these gentlemen. They're getting, they're getting, they're they're getting a deeper understanding. They're having hope. And as you know, without hope, you're not going anywhere anyway. And they're having successes. And people are talking and sharing. And they're talking and sharing. This is very important that you have to understand. I don't teach 3P. I teach 3P as it relates to what's on your mind. We have to understand what's on your mind to be able to help people and relate that to it type of thing. And that's what they're doing. They're a, they understand what the villagers are going through, what the people are going through. That gives them a heads up. But because they have their own wisdom, not Harry's wisdom, their own wisdom, that's what they're taking. That's what's changing the people. They are changing the people, not Harry. Harry understands one thing. He's just an ordinary guy. But with the power of the 3P, miracles happen. Sometimes little miracles, sometimes bigger ones. I don't know how Africa took off. All I can tell you is I followed my notes. That's it. It was just, it just happened. I did nothing. I'd never been there. None of it is, and now we're in, in, in Naka Valley. We're in Northern Uganda. We've got five projects in Kenya, and now we're in Congo. And what created Congo, which is a, obviously a center hold? King Leopold from Belgium. He lied to the world of what he was doing there and, and took a, they did things like they would have to put the rubber on their, their body so they could peel it off and sell it. And if you didn't do it, they'd cut off your hat. That's Belgium. That's the creator of the colonization that created all of this mess. Europe did it. We are the cause of all of this human suffering. Who supported Leopold? United States. As soon as they supported, everyone agreed with them. So you see, we have a responsibility. If we can get out of our own heads and stop worrying about our own life. It's so humbling to see how selfish and greedy I was until I heard people who didn't have anything. And look what we have. It's amazing. And do we appreciate it? No. All we do is complain. I can't understand Canada. The story I tell people, this they can't believe this story. In Canada, we have lots of money, lots of cars, lots of houses, lots of clothes, lots of food, but we're unhappy. And they go, why? And do you know what they aunt that comes out with from them? Oh, they don't know about how to share love. Problem with the world. So let's open it up to questions if you guys have any questions before we call it a day. Maybe, maybe while everyone's having a sit with what they might want to say, is it okay, Harry, if, um, if Phillips translates something from, from us to the team? Oh, it... well, that's the only way. Okay, <laughs> yeah. great. Phillips, is, <laughs> Phillips, will you translate to, to the team from me? Yes, okay? Yes, thank you. So um, 
I just want to say from all of us, thank you so much. Just right now, you've touched our hearts. You, you are our brothers and we are your sisters here. Your stories are, are great treasures that you brought to us today. And even though our lives and our stories may look very different, we are exactly the same. And this understanding of the three principles changed our lives. We share it with our friends and our community the way you do. And we are the same. So we love you and we thank you. <laughs> and we're going to open up for others to say something that they have on their heart, maybe questions, maybe just something they want to share. Also traut euch, das ist so wichtig für sie, von euch zu hören. Meldet euch, wenn was gesagt werden möchte. Um, hi, Silvia, I'm from Vienna in Austria, in Europe. And first of all, really, thank you very much for your sharing your stories and being here with us today. Um, maybe I didn't hear it, but I would be very interesting for me. How long do you do this work already? Maybe I overheard it. How long do you do this work already with in with this in this community? About a year. About a year. I, I've been I've been in in Africa for a year and a half now. Okay. Wow. That's very in a very short time. It's very amazing very short. Amazing. What's happening in this very very short time? Wow. Thank you. Thank you for your work. It is amazing. Power wow. of three principles. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Sandra, would you like to say something while maybe some other people are still thinking? Yeah, so thank you very, 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 very much. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm afraid that I have to cry. <laughs> well, all your stories really touch my heart. And when I'm touched, I often have to cry. So, um, so I think the whole the whole sharing was so beautiful. And it all started with a dream. And it was Harry's dream 40 years ago. So, and I think that is the first amazing thing I heard 
um, that your soul has a dream and when you um, stay with this dream one day God will answer that's a fact Sid said if you have a thought and you don't let it go it will come true and at 65, I'm 78 now, at 65, I said, I guess he's he was wrong. It didn't happen. And then at 69, I said, oh, he's right. I just didn't let it go. Yeah, and what, what I hear in that is this, um, we never know when God answers our longings and wishes that are true in our heart but that it's not up to us it's not up to our personalities it's not up to our control so we can surrender to that and enjoy enjoy life in the meantime and participate you participate with god you don't just the, the surrender is 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 absolutely one hundred percent correct. By the way, that's what Muslim means to surrender to God, and so you're a hundred percent correct. That's what we do. We surrender, but we, but but you don't just wait. You participate. How do you participate? Good thought. And then. Uh... Every one of you shared so beautiful what they saw. And um, like Miranda, he was sharing how um, he op opened himself up to love and how love and understanding helped him to let the darkness be washed away. And I just honor so much this um, willingness to take this leap of faith. And um, Nehemiah, the second sharing. Um, yeah, he, you, you were all sharing about forgiveness, and um, I think uh, in our lives here, sometimes we hold on to little conflicts, like this person said something, and then ten years later you are still angry, and um, to hear from you what what you forgave, uh, the loss, the whatever has been caused by this uh, war and that you were able to be so much grounded in love that you just forgive and forget. That to me is... Um, um, yeah, a very deep inspiration. And I think to all of us. And um, yeah, and then Andu Wusa <laughs> and all of you, what you said is that you that sharing is growing. And um, I think this is what we all can also take from this is like, we all have seen something like you did, seen something that is true, true for every human being. And that sharing um, can be talking about it 
but sharing can also be being in this good feeling and being in love and just carry this love and good feeling with you and uh, love other people the way they are. And care. Mm. And, and then there's the saying that we are a, a billion human being. No, we are one spiritual being having a billion human experiences. And this is also what I heard, like that we are all brothers and sisters, like Shelia already said. I felt like we are all sitting together in your room and we belong together. So thank you very much for this, for everything. And thank you, Shelia, for um, uh, connecting with Harry and making this possible. It, it was the feelings you guys had that attracted me. I want you to know that. I, I could go anywhere, but I don't want to go anywhere. I want to go where the feelings are. And I felt that feelings on your show. It wasn't what you were talking about, Shayla and your partner. It was the it was the the feelings of caring of energy. And and that's that's what makes us brothers and sisters. So even though I had never met Shayla, I wanted to participate with her. And I still haven't met her physically, nor have I met any of these people physically. You have, but, to, be, you have to be careful, Harry, what podcast you listen to, then you get stuck with people. <laughs> that's it. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, one, one thing I am really good at, uh, Jim Beck, who's a member of the of the three P team said, Harry's like a bloodhound. He can smell out where the projects are. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, with a lot of seasoning and so on. And I, that's what I look for. It's the same thing in Africa. There are many people who come to me for money, but they're not interested in three P. They say they are because they want the money. You have to wean them out. These gentlemen deserve what they have achieved the, under the most difficult of circumstances. And I want to emphasize something. We have been with minimum money, and a lot of it my own little bit of money. We accomplished what? $50 million projects have done, and I'll compare our results to any of them. We've been lucky we haven't had money. It would have destroyed it. They're now ready to receive. They're not, they're strong in their understanding. You can't send people who aren't strong in their understanding. The money will, will, will twist their minds into into these crazy areas. So we, I'm glad we haven't had. We've had to do it on a on on creative ideas with nothing given, and yet so much in a year and a half, as you notice, Sylvia. So much. That's the power of spirit. We're so caught up in this material bullshit world. You taking it with you? I didn't notice anybody taking it with them. But oh, it's so obsessive. Human beings have unlimited human potential. Why should only a few of us have that? It just doesn't make any sense to me.
these gentlemen are our inspiration that outside circumstances do not control our destiny. And they have had to learn to experience their own self-esteem. And guess what? It looks to me like they're doing it. <laughs> they are. They are. I wanted to I wanted to say, Harry, before we end up going our separate ways, um, I wanted to mention the GoFundMe account. Um, I don't know if Sandra or Sylvia can post the link that I gave you earlier into the chat for anybody who wants to contribute to this beautiful work. I'm going to do that today when we hang up. Um, just so you know that that's a possibility. And, yeah. and to understand what a well, like like a little bit of money means food, transportation, the data you could keep. they're not on the, like we have that unlimited data. They're they pay for their time with with the quality and they run out of, you know, and that's food out of their mouth, which is minimal to start with type of thing but they're rich they're rich they're rich they're rich in what they shared with us they're rich in what they give and to see the growth in human beings it's like watching kids grow and they grow up beautiful and when they grow up beautiful I have three kids I don't care if they're successful, but if they have a smile on their face, check mark. That's all I care about. And these three gentlemen are putting smiles on a lot of faces. They certainly are. They certainly are. Anyone else who is feeling a little shy and now really wants to still say something to these beautiful people before we leave for today? This room. I would love to say thank you to all of you. I am deeply moved and touched by all your stories. And um, I will leave this, ro this room, this, this meeting as another person. Um, I am not coming from the three principle world, but I'm part of Shelia's world. And um, I know God, and that's why I wanted to participate because of the energy that I felt. And um, I'm so glad that I that I followed this impulse. It it was an hour and a half, but it changed so much. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart that you do this work. I have no words for this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Anyone else? Okay. So Thank you everyone for being here tonight. And it was such a joy. I feel so happy. I feel so happy to have spent this time together. And maybe we come and spend some time with you again, Phillips and the team. Maybe we have something to share that may be interesting for you and your community. And Harry will let us know if that's the case. And we're here for you. And Anything. Anything is possible. I I have no, I am very good in the unknown. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. We have we have made a nice connection that is obvious. It's a fact. Yes. Let us let it grow. Let it grow. Let us let, yes. let it let us share, and we'll see what ideas we have, and so on, type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and, absolutely. And and understand how much you mean to them as well yes we do and perhaps gonna... Phillips you could before we go yeah. ask what this meet 
could you just, in your own words, very short, what this meeting means to you? All right, thank you. You can hear me there? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, it is an excitement meeting for us because uh, we've been sharing in different webinars uh, with Harry and the others, but this event has been uh, grateful to us and we are very happy for it because we expressed our things uh, in sharing to the world how we feel and how much we have uh, helped others, other people and well, the connection is weak. Phillips, the connection is weak. But we get the Phillips, it's good. We get the idea of what you were you were saying. And um, they appreciate what you what you were saying very much. And maybe this this I think we will just call it right here and Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful feelings of sharing. It's really been a, a treat. This group is this group is powerful. This is what Sid meant. It's in the feeling. Anybody can repeat the words. Speak what you know. Leave it at that. Absolutely. So um how do you say thank you very much? Asante Sana? Asante sana. Asante sana, everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good day, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys can turn yourself on if you wanted to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. Okay. Well, Shayla, thank you.